Anyways, look how good my curls are today, girl. Like, I washed my hair. Yes, they're so big. <laughs> I love it. I literally was like, hello, hair. And especially <laughs> since I cut it myself recently. I'm not sure. Do you think mm-hmm. I should, like, be honest, should I, like, grow these, like, mini layers out so they're longer? And it's more just, like, this is fringe? Or should I have, like, layers? Should I make even more layers in my hair? I think – Okay, it depends. Like, if you want your hair to look big, layers big. will always make your hair look bigger. So right? I think layers I, might be the move. Like a I full have, on wolf cut. Okay, so I did a, a wolf cut, but I only did mm-hmm. three layers of the cut, and now I'm want to go back mm-hmm. even more and go even like, mur, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like if like sometimes when I get my cut like freshed up, I literally have like hair, like little like curls standing up at the top, and it kind of looks like a little halo yes, situation. Yeah, I and it's love really fun. that. No, I love that. That's exactly it. I'm like, mm-hmm. especially as it grows out, I'm like, yeah, I think I might do that eventually. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So welcome to the podcast. Arena is here once again for an amazing collaboration. I am stoked about today's subject, and I'm very excited to talk to you about it. How are we doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Wonderful. Okay. Mm. I will say um, this. What am I drinking? Honey, honeysuckle, honey. Is that a plant? Is that a thing? That is a plant. Yes. It's (laughs) so good. I was worried I Mm -hmm. overbrewed it, but no, it's, it's, it's peak. Usually I feel like with, with herbal teas, like you can't overbrew them. They always just taste good. I was freaking out. I was like, did Alexa do me wrong? And then I did it wrong. (laughs) What are you drinking? I'm drinking, I'm not sure what's all in it, but it's supposed to be a tea that helps you with your menstrual cycle. So that's what I'm drinking, PMS tea. I love that. I love that so much. Okay, so today's subject matter is about the weirdos. Who are the weirdos? I put out a, I think a vlog, right? Or like a video talking about that maybe during a stream. And you reached out to me and I was like, oh, we got to talk about this then. Because I think, you know, I feel very normal. But I'm obviously weird. And then I've been given some feedback lately from people who have, like, let me know, like, hey, you're kind of weird. <laughs> I was like, in what way, though? So you you wrote me and you said something really interesting. And do you want to share it, what you said? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, yes. So basically my interpretation is that being normal is basically not being a public burden. But whatever you do in your private life, that's your private life. And then once you get to know someone, suddenly they're the weirdo. So Mm -hmm. once we get to know somebody's private activities, you don't know if Bob, your coworker, who shows up to work on time every day, gets all his shit done, is wearing clean clothes, smells clean. You don't know what he does in his private time. He might have the biggest piss kink on earth. So... While at work, you might think, oh, Bob's a normie. He doesn't get me. I'm like so mysterious and he's just a normie. But you don't know shit about Bob. Yeah. And so to me, when people are like, oh, the normies, it just says, oh, the people I don't know. That's actually really interesting. I think, you know, how I'm always frustrated with the fact that, okay, there's the existing, so like ourselves and the existence, everything outside of ourselves. And the chaos ensues when we have to meet those two you know, parts of us. And so what's difficult is like as a society, I can't decide how much of our inner working should just be private. As somebody who has gone to Folsom, which was in public Mm -hmm. in San Francisco, as somebody who has gone Mm -hmm. to the Solstice Parade in Seattle, which is in public, as somebody who's done a lot of things in public, it's nice when the community comes together and says like, let's be weird in public together with the kids even. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I do wonder if – we're asking a lot. Like, did you know in Balboa Park, there are furry family days? I actually did not. And I've lived here my whole life. <laughs> Dude, my sister saw it. She was hanging out in Balboa Park and she saw a flyer uh-huh. for it and sent it to me. She's like, what is this? I was like, what is this? But then I heard, Whoa. do you know Discord has official servers and there's a furry server 13, ages, 13 years old and up? I did not. I'm not really on Discord like that. So yeah. I had no idea yeah. there's even there's official like, ones. I didn't know this either mm-hmm. until somebody told me and I'm just sitting here like, okay, my bubbles are being popped. Like everyone has access like of all ages into their uniqueness mm-hmm. and their weirdness. But I do think that people are basically, I want to say like most people are kind of normalish, but then we have these intimate habits or these intimate ways yes. of being. And so it makes me wonder, I think you said something in your comment to me originally about like, um, mm-hmm. what, like people, like people are basically all weird. We just don't. Yeah. Yeah. We don't talk about it, but like we are. Mm -hmm. So does that mean like no one's actually ever normal? So here's what I'll say to me. 
the normal, normal, so there's like a few different definitions, right? There's like mm-hmm. common, normal yes. as common. Yes. But what even is common? Because we can break it down to like being a woman is common. I mean, that's mm-hmm. like over half of the population. Being a man is pretty common. But then you start breaking it down into, you know, various other aspects of yourself. And at the end of the day, you as the individual are not common. <laughs> yes. And then there's normal as in healthy or like conscious and aware of your health and like not neglecting yourself Mm. um and normal as in what i initially said which is not being a public burden Mm. and that to me means like so like Folsom, for example that's an event that's put on by the community you're not being a public burden by participating in it Mm. because it's an event that's put on specifically for this activity um of course some people might disagree you know they might say oh pride parades and Folsom and all this is being a public burden but I'm not talking about those people I think most normal people understand that humans can put on events for like Mm -hmm. specific niche things Mm -hmm. but if someone is having like a mental health crisis in the street right at that moment they're not being normal but I do think that that's right? Like a moment in time. And as you say, moments can life last a lifetime. Yeah. But we all have like these moments maybe of being public burdens, like having a mental breakdown in the street. Um, maybe you were drugged or are on drugs in public. Um, and and I mean like on the street, not at a festival, right? Like right, the right, context right. changes whether um, you are normal or not in that moment. Um, and then of course, there's people who seek to disrupt public life so maybe like a group of like three protesters gluing themselves to like a building or something Mm -hmm. (laughs) I wouldn't say that that's very normal behavior um but I noticed that when I'm describing these things it's like again like a moment in time at this moment they're being the weirdo but I don't think that that necessarily defines them as a whole and so Mm -hmm. to me it's weird to categorize a human as normal or not in a holistic way yeah because we never see all of the parts of a person yeah to really make that call I think do you remember when I was talking to Mr. Girl and he was like um you make it sound like people are burdens I was like bro what are you talking about my cat's a burden she's my favorite burden but she's a burden you want to try you know what moving to Croatia and trying to find an apartment that would take my cat like, okay, it's called an inconvenience and it's an inconvenience, you know, whether we love them or not. And so what do you think about that narrative that people have where it's like, don't call people a burden? I think there's like a few different ways to think about it because someone can be a burden that you choose happily and willingly. And then somebody can be an undue burden. Mm. And it's not that they're being a burden. It's that the circumstance in which we are interacting is burdensome. Yeah. So if, for example, you're walking to the grocery store and somebody accosts you, like, can you sign this petition? Or like, hey, like, um, they start telling you their life story. Right now, they're being an undue burden because mm-hmm. generally, if you see that somebody is busy, you don't accost them in the street to talk to them. So I think we are all burdens, mm-hmm. but we're not all always undue burdens and when we are undue burdens I feel like we should try to minimize those moments as much as we can but I don't think there's anything wrong with acknowledging that people can be tiring it's interesting this idea of like weird versus normal I think first of all I totally agree that like context matters so when I say normal I mean expected behavior versus like normal meaning common to the culture which I guess is kind of the same thing though right you have expected behavior based off of the bubble then that informs you whether someone's acting out of turn so I suppose it does get down to that in some ways it's hard for me because I'm so chronically online especially right now that my reality of what's appropriate behavior is just dictated by which internet bubble I'm in at the moment or even if it's on my own channel you know what I mean so it's different but I don't like in um in Croatia what I'm learning being here is that it is very weird for me to go hi I like your dress and it's like everyone's like oh like they don't even know what to do with me and I don't know and I was like did I make a mistake and like there is sort of this rule of like yeah I can tell you're an American because you're waving at a stranger in the road and you're talking to them and you're like do I know you and I think that's really interesting because in my head I'm trying to be like um 
positive or optimistic or I'm trying to communicate that I'm friendly. And so in that moment, I have to like adapt to something different. So I am the weird person in that moment and that I could adapt to be less, I guess, warm. But it's not that I'm being less warm because I think that insinuates that they're not warm. But everyone here feels warm to me because they don't feel like they're um, burdening me with any kind of stress. And so I take that as like a positive emotion. And I'm like, oh, I feel positive around these people. And so it's kind of interesting, this idea. I am I am sort of on this own – I'm sure you've heard me monologue, I'm sure, about how I'm like, what kind of neurodivergent am I? I'm obviously neurodivergent, but what kind? I can so clearly see people, usually, not always, obviously, but I am having the hardest time deciding like, am I in this category or this category? Only because I have so much overlap. I'm like, which percentage am I more? You know what I mean? Do you ever have that problem with yourself? Yes, I do. I will say though, like – in regards to you, like, I mean, obviously we've met up, you know, for that yeah. podcast before and we went out. Yeah. And yeah, you know how to conduct yourself in public in, you know, the SoCal bubble, obviously. Yeah. Like there was nothing where I was like, oh, Britney's being a fucking weirdo, right? I'm so embarrassed <laughs> to take her out. Like, no. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, the Croatia and like in general, Eastern Europe, it's uh, you don't smile at strangers. You only smile at people you know, mm -hmm. and you definitely don't greet strangers. Right. So that's just like a cultural thing that like you'll get used to or like adapt around. But yes, I definitely do have that issue. Um, in regards to you, I personally don't think that like I think like the neurodivergency in you is probably from the BPD. Yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah, same. Maybe like an ADD thing, but like. Yeah. I feel like that's so overdiagnosed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I I don't think there's really like I think you're very normal to me. Like in my that's the thing. Southern I feel like California. I'm pretty normal, but then that yeah. feedback. Okay, here's the thing. I love <laughs> Southern California. Okay, <laughs> born and raised. I've spent my life there. I love it there, and I've always vibed. Like I've never really had a problem. I, you know, I've had some problems maybe in like groups of I don't know like upper middle class to like lower middle class or like something like that like some class issues but otherwise like I vibe I'm a Californian girl so when people will say things like I people will say things about the way we talk like Cal Southern California girls and they might insinuate that it's like you're not saying much of anything and I'm like I think we're saying plenty I just think we're talking in the way we talk and so when we talk the way we talk it's like yeah we're we're talking in the way that we've been taught but also we're saying plenty but you might not you might be the not normal one who's not getting it and that's what's so interesting is like the moment you're not in the bubble you're kind of the freak but everyone observes the other bubbles and goes that's the freak and I'm like well because you're not in the bubble exactly it's con it's it, as we were saying so many times it is context dependent and I feel like yeah. it gets a little mess not messier but yeah it gets a little bit messier on the internet just because so many different people can come and then they project their way of behaving yes. onto everyone else. It's interesting to me. I think, how, how do I put this? Hmm. I'm gonna have to chew on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do think people do a lot of projecting. Here's what I noticed. The way that people interact online, that's another like, way that I categorize people because I think primarily socializing online and here's what I mean because I don't think you do that I know you say you do I know you say you're like an internet person mm -hmm. but you have your husband yeah you the people that you socialize with online are people that have been in your offline life mm -hmm. they are people they're your family they are your inner circle friends mm -hmm. you didn't primarily meet your inner circle online, right? You True. had your family prior to that. And right. dating online, I think, is a pretty normal occurrence, right? Like yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. not necessarily through Discord, but like Hinge, Tinder, et cetera. That's just That's the way true. we do things. It's a tool. It's a tool. And I think you used it in a healthy way. Mm. I also think there's like unhealthy ways to use it. And for people whose social lives are primarily online, as in literally they have never met their closest friends oh, I see. they are having a long-term online relationship with a person that not only have they not met in person to like figure out the chemistry the va va boom yeah. the like how do we even feel physically in front of each other yeah yeah and yeah. they don't plan to and so to me that's probably gonna go into the category of less normal 
as in less healthy. Mm. And I also notice, um, and I haven't really been in comment sections until I started getting into content creation. And I noticed the comment sections are so low trust. They assume the worst intentions of the person in the video. Um, There's obviously some very nuanced and very like nice comments as well, of course. But primarily people will have a doubtful or like a very low trust reaction to the content creator, even like on like your videos, like Mm -hmm. when people react or on the Jubilee or cut videos, people are like, this person is obviously a narcissist and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, they're probably just like a person who signed up for a fun video and like went and had a fun time. (laughs) Like it's not that deep. guys. So that's something that I notice is like the people who are like on the internet, who are like commenting, who are living their lives fully through the internet. Mm. It feels like they, they tend to be a little bit lower trust. Like they're very distrusting of, of people in general. Well, I, I think know. like you said, they might not have that like lived experience of the vibe because it's true. Like, look, I feel like a very online person right now because all my life is through technology. Like, look, even this collab is. But at the same time, we have collabed in real life. I have met you in real life. I've met your partner. Like, I've, vi- I've met your dog. So like, you know, hello. Into me. Like, that's intimacy if I've ever, you know, known it. But like, that's – I've met – a part of you that like the internet doesn't get to see right and like you've met a part of me that the internet doesn't get to see and there's something really important about that interaction so I will say obviously I grew up in the 90s without the internet first and foremost okay so I do remember a childhood where I didn't have the internet and all my friends in inner circle were people I met off the internet except for one only one person in my in my inner circle I met through the internet. Otherwise, it, well, two if you count my husband. But everybody else, like, I met because we showed up at, at events. And we were like, hey, what's up? And then in real life, we bonded and we've never been apart. So I am incredibly secure in my sense of I'm good to my community. They, they like me. They're all happy for me. Even recently, like, they've all been like, wow, you're, like, so happy. And I was like, yeah, everything's working out. Like, the stress of the move is ending. Immigration's ending. Everything is, like, going into a good zone. But I have noticed that the internet is still the place in which I am dubbed, like, super weird. Not that my family wouldn't say I was weird, but they do feel like I'm normal weird. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? No, that totally makes sense. I feel like we all have our idiosyncrasies, like the weird little things about us. Mm -hmm. But I think, like you said, if you're a good member of the community, if you know how to show up to the grocery store and not throw all the cereal boxes around, like I think I think you can be dubbed a pretty normal person. Um, So it's interesting to me how people on the internet are able to, when they themselves are sitting here projecting onto people, they don't see that as weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But they see someone as just like discussing an idea and sharing a part of themselves that yes, maybe you wouldn't share outside of the internet or like you would share in like a specific context. They see that as weird. But again, not them projecting like a bunch of mental illnesses onto people, motives onto people, like you know, it's it's wild to me. Like, they think they can really mind read somebody through a video. <laughs> well, I think the craziest part is, like, I think, okay, so I put out this wedding podcast, right, about how I got married. And it was amazing how many comments I got from people who were on Twitter or whatever, or even on the video itself, were like, oh, my God, this is her borderline. She's having an episode. Like, this is so clearly mental illness. And I'm sitting here like, how long do y'all take to get married or like stay committed to your partners or like how, what culture am I talking to right now that a year into my relationship, I'm not allowed to make that commitment. Like how it's just so interesting. And so again, I'm not trying to say that they, all I do in my head is I go like this. I go, okay, so this is a person who's coming from a background where like they probably date for six, seven, 12 years or something before making the commitment. And I don't mean like marriage is the goal. I mean, commitment is the goal. Like the moment you say I'm committed to my partner, we're moving in together. We're going to have a house together. We're going to have a life together, have a pet together. Like you're making a commitment. And I'm used to people doing that. And about like, I don't know, like 12 months to two years. And the I read that 75% ish of Americans usually get married within two years of dating or at least engaged. So I'm like, am I really the freak here? Like, what is happening? And I, and the other question is, what age is consuming mm. this? Because to me, a 30-year-old knowing what they want 
is the most normal thing to me. Uh, like, and I'm 34. Course. I'm old. I'm <laughs> old. I'm not even in the beginning stages of I just turned 30. I'm basically mm-hmm. 40. <laughs> <laughs> so like that to me is the most normal thing is knowing yeah. what you want. And you are you wanted to get married. So of course, to me, the way that you went about it was the normal way. Like why would you be like, oh, let's discover things about each other throughout this relationship instead of putting it all on the table. Like discovering things about each other is like for high school and for college. That's what, or like college age, right? Like obviously you don't have to go to college. But yeah, it's like for for like 16 years old to like 23 years old. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then once you hit your mid 20s, you start realizing what you actually want and you start dating a bit differently and operating in relationships a bit differently. That to me is very normal. Right. I don't know what I want and I'm 40 years old. That to me is less normal. But I mean, I'm sure it's pretty common. But I mean, there's like this one other Internet creator. um, She was on BuzzFeed, Alison Raskin. Um, mm-hmm. she was like that Jewish girl. She did a lot of like Jewish videos and stuff, like okay. when you're at your Jewish grandma's or whatever on BuzzFeed. She also her goal was to find a relationship and get engaged and married within a year. Mm-hmm. And she was also like, I think, in her 30s or like entering her 30s when she was like yeah. operating that way. I didn't really see her audience call that weird necessarily, right. which is interesting to me. Right. Um but yeah, like, so there's multiple creators online. Like, I'm sure you you and her aren't the only ones who operate that way. And and also, I get confused about what people are confused about when you describe your dating, like, yeah. strategy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that just makes sense for the goal that you're trying to achieve. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe it's because, like, okay, so she gets to say, like, oh, I'm Jewish. And so people go, oh, Jewish. Like, it's a religious or a cultural thing. But because I'm a secularist and I'm not dating an Assyrian, I'm sure they're like, well, then what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm still adhering to the – Honestly, I don't even think they're thinking that deeply about it. No, stop. (laughs) I don't think they're thinking that deeply about it. I think they're just like – I think that maybe they – they're probably, again, at an age or in a life experience where they don't know what they want. They can't even conceive of – being in a relationship, let alone knowing what you want in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. And you've been in multiple relationships. I've been in multiple relationships, yeah. you know? And so at that point, and, and like, yeah, that, that was your experimentation time. That was your let's get to know what I want time. Yes. Sorry. Oh my God. My boyfriend's like cheering at football. So I <laughs> gave him a thumbs up. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, like that was the experimentation time was like yeah. those early relationships but for people who don't get to have those or like haven't had those yet and they're young and or they didn't get to have those when they're young, they mm-hmm. can't conceive, again, of like being in one and also knowing what you want from one. Yeah. Yeah. And Actually, so, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. And I was going to say, so I don't even think they're thinking about the culture, to be honest. <sighs> That's funny that you say that because I think uh, Not So Erudite brought that up too on her stream where they were like, why do people keep saying Brittany hasn't dated this guy for a long time? She dated multiple people in her 20s, which means she literally has tools to expedite the process for the seriousness of the current relationship. Like, and it's true. My 20s were an experiment. I was figuring out what I liked. I was figuring out my boundaries. Am I okay with somebody doing this? Am I okay with my partner being different in this way? Like, am I, I was figuring it out. And yes, did I, you know, feel like I was in love and express that feeling and want to marry these people in some ways? Yes, but we never did because I knew I wasn't ready and I knew they were and ready and I was like something needs to change and until this person came along I was like oh this is this is what I'm willing to say yes to this is the circumstance in which I am ready to expedite expedite this process and our families were literally involved we had like literally 20 people collectively involved in this decision at least giving us advice and wisdom so that's the other thing too is I forget I have this inner circle. I have this whole group of people. I have a priest. I have like all this access. And also both of our parents got together pretty quickly and have both been together for like 30 plus years. So we're dealing with parents who have this example of success in a way that's similar. We were serious and we did. I remember asking his mom like, hey, do you think it's weird that I'm I'm good. We're going to get married so quickly. And she goes, oh, no, that's like what we did. That's what your parents did. Makes sense. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, what are we freaking out? My, now, my parents, to be fair, 
freaked out in the beginning and then very quickly got on board, which is really, really nice. And I think they were just freaking out because they're like, we just want to make sure like we're not rushing into something. But if you think this is the person and the priest thinks and your brother thinks and we like you guys trust this, like you obviously seem very happy. I'm on board. It wasn't really about the time. It was about the emotions like are your because, you know, I do a borderline. So maybe. Maybe I could have relapsed. Maybe I could have had a, a really crazy favorite person moment. But that's why I double checked. And that's why I did my little checklist. Because, you know, ultimately, eventually I was going to find my person. It's just, I don't know. Like, I must have, like, a different threshold for what I find weird. But seeing somebody know what they want be aware of like what their health needs are like right like you're not neglecting yourself you're right. making sure that you're staying healthy you're doing your steps you're taking care of your mental health what's weird about any of that yeah 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 like oh you like yeah. to watch anime okay like yeah so <laughs> yeah well i think people so, can't yeah. believe that uh people who experience like mental health especially borderline has such a bad reputation could ever be what they view as normal. And I'm going to be honest with you. I assume most of them haven't also attained what they think is normal goals. So they don't want to see someone like me do it. Honestly, probably. Yeah. That It's like, so here's what I'll say. Like when I say like healthy, I mean like aware of and taking care of your health, like going yeah. to whoever you need to go to, to figure shit out. Right. But like if you're in a state where you're neglecting yourself and you you know, you're letting your health deteriorate. Um, I feel like, yeah, you can become maybe resentful of the people who aren't letting themselves get to that point. And like, of yeah. course, and then like, it's a moment I think that like, we've all been there at some point. But it's something that you can grow out of, like once you realize, like you need like that fire lit under your ass to really yeah. get your shit together in that way and realize that yes, you can achieve normal as in healthy or right. rather like aware of health and taking care of the things you need to take care of. And you are going to be able to take steps to achieve whatever goals that you want to achieve, whether it be relational, career, financial. You just need to have the discipline like everyone else. Like we put in right. our, our pants one leg at a time. We go to work. We uh, roll our eyes through the annoying customers. We uh, go like, ugh, and then yay, it's Friday. You know, like most normal people are doing that. And they have their own struggles that, like, we don't know about. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like instead of being resentful of the normal people, it might be good to ask, like, what are they doing and what tools can I take from the yeah. people who I look up to um, to maybe improve my own life? Okay, here's a question because this came up about – you're watching, uh, I think, Brett Cooper talk about TV shows – and I wasn't like I like I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons when I was young because my parents considered them pretty dysfunctional and disrespectful and they didn't want us to like, you know, become those kind of bratty kids. And then I started to think about, you know, what is normal. And I think the conversation ended up continuing in the comment section of my video, which made me have this thought where they were like, Brittany, why are you dismissing that these TV shows are dysfunctional because it's normal to be dysfunctional? And I think everyone like experiences dysfunction at some point in their life like I'm not saying we don't I definitely have like moments of dysfunction in my family I think that's pretty clear and so there's something to be said about is for me I think of normal as healthy which is a mistake in some ways because obviously normal could mean common and common could mean dysfunctional so when we tell ourselves like I feel normal like I'm saying I feel like grounded in reality and pretty based and balanced and reasonable that's also how i feel i will say however that i i would say yes it's common and we all have our dysfunctions and here's what i'll say it depends on your development in life like your age right like it can be pretty normal as a teenager to like have a screaming match with your parents because you're like in your rebellious phase, right? right. And I think like we got to look at the whole picture. Like, are you still in screaming matches with your parents at like 22? If so, I feel like suddenly we're not in the normal dysfunction territory anymore. Right, right, right. And in regards to The Simpsons, I mean, I didn't super watch that either. But I feel like it's like an exaggerated dysfunction. Mm. 
that's like, yes, pretty normal. Like you got the sassy kids, you got like, you know, they're pr playing pranks on each other right. and stuff like that. Like for example, um, that eight passengers situation, um, the oldest son who got take his bed taken away for a very, what I consider to be a very normal prank mm -hmm. of being like to your younger sibling, we're going to Disneyland, yeah. like, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, that's, that's very normal. Um, but then the way that the, the parents reacted to that was not normal. Right. Oh, here's, here's another thing. Do you consider your parents normal? That's a great question. Um, no. I was going to say, cause I wonder how other people would perceive them. Right. Cause to me, that level of religiosity isn't normal. Yeah. But I feel like to their community, that is normal, right? So we're back to the bubbles, right? Right. And so that's why I think the being a public burden part of normal is so important because yeah. I really doubt your parents are public burdens. I doubt they're like standing out there. No, they're great people there. in their bubble <laughs> yeah. love them. They're great community members. Right? Everyone's like, when I go visit the church, everyone's like, oh, you're their daughter. Your parents are just the most amazing people. I'm like, I know. They give to the church. They're very, no, people love them in their bubbles. They love their, like the way they raise the kids. They love everything about it. But to me, I'm just like, yeah, I think my parents are a little weird. And to my to my friends who are not in that bubble, they're like, your parents are weird. I was like, yeah, but in the bubble, they're, they're top dogs. Yeah. And like <laughs> your friends who like find your parents weird only find them weird because they know that like not super private, but somewhat private thing of them, which is their mm -hmm. like degree of religiosity. But if your right. parents are at the grocery store, oh no, they probably pretty, look like yeah, regular, normal regular people. people. So that's, and they that's are what that I mean. Way, of course, them. they know how to yeah. function in public. I mean, geez. Exactly. And yeah. so I think that's like the most important thing to me is, do you know how to function in public? Mm. Do you know how to have good enough hygiene in public to where people are like, oh my God, what's that smell? And have to like yes. avoid you. Do you know how to talk to the cashier and be like polite mm -hmm. for this bubble, you know? Um, yeah, that that's like an important aspect to me in addition to like being aware of your health. So there's like the private normalcy, which is I think the health normal that we're talking about. But there's also that public thing which I think like if you are in a public setting and you see someone being weird you know that they're being weird yeah and it's not like oh my god I'm so non-conformist so I'm gonna like start singing karaoke in the middle of the grocery store <laughs> I'm so random <laughs> like okay <laughs> yeah 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 okay wait you this know? is actually kind of interesting because you're right like okay my parents I'll say one of the greatest tools my parents ever gave me was like self-awareness. Be self-aware of how you're impacting the people around you and like be be considerate to some degree, right? You know, like act accordingly when you're in church. Don't just talk over the priest when you're in the grocery store. Don't just block the aisles. Like be thoughtful about how you're shopping. Be mannered, like have manners, right? And I will say, I wonder if that, okay, this could be crazy. So just like stop me. Often I'll get this feedback from people who are not in my audience where they're like, Brittany seems so manipulative. Like she just like she's so bubbly fake and she changes herself with every YouTuber she talks to. And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to have good manners. Like I'm in their home with their personality and their vibe and I'm trying to adapt. But I'm sure it could look like why aren't you being consistently like a particular Brittany every time? And it's because I was taught to adapt to the atmosphere because you don't want to be the person who stands out. But I try really – I've been trying harder to stand out, I guess, because I'm a YouTuber. So I think on YouTube land, you're supposed to stand out and be aggressive every time. But in real life, you are supposed to, I think, adapt to, like, whose home you're visiting. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. Again, this might be just, like, a Southern California thing because I haven't – like, I watch basically m most of your videos and most of your collabs. And you don't act that different. You're just being considerate. No, <laughs> you're just being considerate to your guest or you're being considerate to whoever's having you on as their guest. Um, yeah, no, I, I think, that, again, I think it's the projections. I think people are projecting, yeah. honestly. Like yeah. it's, yeah, I don't think you should doubt your behavior because I think you have great conversations. Like, I don't know if people want like screaming matches or whatever, but that to me, like, to me, it's admirable that you are like, I am going to maintain a healthy way of existing on the internet. And I'm not gonna put my mental health and the mental health of like my fellow colleagues 
in jeopardy for some what entertainment like yeah. already the conversations i think that you have are extremely entertaining to listen to like they're it's meant to be like a podcast right something you put right. on in the background while you're like doing laundry right. and washing dishes absolutely like drama's entertaining sure but i don't know like again i feel like this is a very particular section of the audience that is maybe in their like again teens early 20s that are in there i need like that constant loud Spice. stimulation yeah like yeah. i need that drama fed to me phase um cuz i think most grown adults probably understand the hey let's be cordial <laughs> and have a nice yeah. decent conversation okay vibe. but then you know when you're vibing with somebody and the person is hearing you and they're like oh they like you think like me cuz we're vibing and i'm like oh no no hold on and then when they realize you're not like them i think that's when they start to think like are you weird or are you normal and they're thinking normal is what i am and so if you're not what i am you're the weird one and you should change and i think that's my thing is like we're all normal in our own bubbles but then you can be weird in your own bubble like i know what weird is when i'm at the grocery store and i know not to do it <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I know what I've been taught is expected of me. And like I said, I've never had a problem socializing, making friends. Like people like me, people trust me with their kids. Like I've always had great reviews from people. It's only on the internet where people have actually tried to attack my character so much that I'm like, how do you all function? There's no way. Cause like I've never had a problem in real life. And so I'm like, what is going on? And so I have to decide, like, is the bubble of the internet just so weird that it's, like, beyond? Like, even – can I say, like, you were on that video about beauty. And you know how Abba and Preach, re like, reviewed it? And Abba, Abba was, like, calling you out. I was like, no, he doesn't know girl bubble. He doesn't know this bubble. Like, he doesn't even know. Like, I love Abba. Like, obviously, he's so great. But I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is so weird. And, like, the way they have the conversation, the way they, like, even perceive perceive the interaction is so specific that I'm like, oh, this is so weird to watch. It feels like, oh, they don't know what's normal in this thing. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. And I've – this is probably, like, the 50th time I've said this about that video. But <laughs> women's preferences for other women are generally going to be different from men's preferences for women. Women yeah. like tall, slender, okay? That's it. That, that, that literally explains the whole video. Sorry. <laughs> um, but what was I going to say? Yeah, no, I think like what I noticed is I, I do think you're right in that it's the internet being weird. And it's not that most people that interact with the internet are weird. I think it's the people who comment mm -hmm. and who specifically want to choose to do a negative comment and not even like a constructive criticism comment. Yeah, which I, I love and those I feel like, ones. Yeah, no, no, no. There's definitely like some nuanced, very balanced, very like good constructive criticism. But so many of the comments are just so clearly projecting to me. Mm -hmm. um, like, and I mean, on your videos, I notice mostly like positive comments. Yeah. So, but I don't know I've like what your inner. Yeah, but like your interactions on Twitter, I don't know about. Mm -hmm. But I totally believe you when you, you're saying like, oh, like these people are saying all these weird things, calling me manipulative. And like, it must be tough to deal with like year after year. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like very early on. So like those comments, I'm like, well, I know myself. Like I know right. what happened. So like whatever, right. I guess. <laughs> like And right. like I'll clarify and like, you know, explain myself. Um and people can, you know, believe or not believe. Right, right. But right. I can't imagine, like, that happening for years to the point where you're like, wait, <laughs> what is happening? Like, am I the weird one? And it's I, – I don't know what it is, like – because I don't want to say that, like, most of the people commenting just ha haven't gotten out a lot. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> – I don't like want to necessarily say that, but sometimes, but sometimes it does feel that way. Yeah. Um, in that they like have seen like their their life. Fair. They have seen like this little slice of pie, um, and they're like, okay, that that's the correct yeah way of operating. Yeah. And when they get to have the privilege of having a peek into the private life of a different way of operating 
they like short circuit or something. I don't know. Like, I don't know why people can't just trust that a grown ass adult (laughs) who has a career and is financially and mentally stable Mm. knows like what they're doing with their own life. I'm telling you. I don't know. It's those two things. The one, they're seeking validation. And when they see somebody like not aggressive, like, look, I'm not here trying to aggressively seek validation about my weirdness, but I'm trying to be self-aware enough and introspective enough to go like, okay, in what ways am I weird? And I could name plenty, but I think here's the thing. My key weirdness, I think this is accurate. I'm not sure. I'm still meditating on it. I think the thing that makes me super weird and unnerving to people is now that I've like gone through this, you know, I've landed where I've landed. I'm obviously not very easily like, boxed unless you only interact with me in a certain way so if you only hang out with me getting mimosas in southern california then like it's easy to box britney in like a fun bubbly bubble and then if it's like oh i only see her do debates she's like a debater or i only see her do this she's this but if you see all of the things then it's like what and then i get along with most people because most people are interesting and nice but also like i don't want to be besties and so like the issue is like people don't understand like i think people just off like they fit so nicely and so it's hard for them to process and so they don't distrust like they don't trust it and they get confused. But I'm willing to admit like I'm plenty weird. But I just don't think I'm weird maliciously and everyone thinks it's like a malicious weird. I'm like no. The weird malicious people are very few and far between. Like they're very few in society. If society was riddled with weird malicious people, we'd be in a very different state. But most people are just weird but fine. We all know how to act like you said at the grocery store. To me, when you said, oh, they fit so nicely in their box, I don't know if that's necessarily true Mm. because then to me that would imply somebody who's leading a very shallow sort of existence. I feel like we all have inner complexity. Okay, true. And I mean, I guess you could nurture it or not, (laughs) but I feel like if you are nurturing it, then you should be adaptable to the different situations that you are put in. Like... Maybe it's time to get naked at Folsom. Boom, adapting. Maybe it's time to go put on your suit and go to work. Mm -hmm. And so I think most people do that maybe subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And, but maybe they're, or maybe they are struggling with that. Maybe that is what they're struggling with, is adapting to the different situations. And so when they see someone else adapting to different situations successfully, they're like, oh, you're being fake. Oh, you're being manipulative. Oh, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, you're just adapting to the context of what you're operating from. Right. And it's all, I think, authentic parts, right? Because it's – here's the thing. I don't think we can be inauthentic other than, like, I guess, lying, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're not actively lying, like, for example, on the internet, I'm not going to talk about the things I talk about with my inner circle. That's not me being fake. That's me just choosing to show a certain part of myself. But it's still me. Yeah. So it's like we're we're the internet is not owed every single part of you. And sometimes it feels like they think they are owed to that. Or else they absolutely feel that way. I think people (laughs) I think what they're, they are is they don't know how to tell if they maybe feel safe in some way. It's got to be – it feels fearful to me. It feels like are you so insecure? Like do you, are you afraid? Like do you think something bad's going to happen to you if you don't, you know, understand this person? But when I don't understand someone, I just become more curious about them where I'm like, oh, interesting. Like what am I not understanding about how to categorize you or how to interact with you? And I also think there's something to be said about um, people feel like they have a right – maybe this is just on the internet – to sort of an intimacy with people. Like if you're in a chat room or if you're on a discord and people are like, I spent a lot of time with you. So like, you know, but but not everyone's having that lived experience online. Not everyone's having that lived experience in public. Not everyone's feeling that way in their cohorts in college. So this idea is like, we're all going in with this expectation that's different. I know I run into it all the time. Like people misunderstand the level of intimacy that should be expected or even even amongst like friends, sometimes it happens in friend groups, right? Where like your girls are getting a little too in your business and you got to be like, hey, 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 I love you, but like, okay, like I know what I'm doing. Sometimes you have to reassure people, I know what I'm doing. Thank you, though. But people feel almost like they have a right to the investment in your story. And I do think it's like inappropriate. Like I want to say there's a lot of inappropriate boundary crossing that's been happening 
And I've experienced it. And I think a lot of us have to experience it where it's like, okay, I'm open, but I have boundaries. And right now this feels inappropriate because you are assuming that you know me better than I know myself. Whether you're a commenter, a YouTuber, a friend, family member, a mother. (laughs) So I think there's like, that's to me, that is weird. I couldn't agree more. It's like, exactly. Like, that's what I'm saying. Most people who are on the internet watching videos, just watch the video, go like, boop, boop, boop. And then they move on with their day. Right. Right. That to me is normal. But somebody being like, here's a compilation of clips where so-and-so said this. Clearly, this is what they're thinking and their body language says this. Okay, now you're being weird. (laughs) Yeah. Leave people alone. So, yeah, I think it's – what was I going to say? No, yeah. I I, I basically agree with you. Um, It's – It's weird to me to think that people, or especially strangers, owe you something beyond basic civility. Yeah. You can negotiate for like what people owe you when you get beyond the level of strangers. Right. But I think people, like it's like that parasocial thing, right? Like people think that they know you beyond beyond the content that you put out. Mm. Because it is in some ways personal but not really right like these are things that are I think okay in certain contexts to share in public right right? like you can have like a conversation about your relationship with your coworkers. you can have a conversation about like sexuality and stuff at certain Mm -hmm. events in the clubs in like you know in certain contexts including on the internet But that doesn't mean that inherently now your relationship is closer than just, oh, these are now things that we kind of know about each other. And I feel like people think they're owed, like, the feeling that you're their best friend just because Mm -hmm. you're on the internet Mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. Or even, like, oh, how do I say this? Like, the – I think I see this dynamic in like parents and kids when the kids grow up and become very different from the parents where they're like, but you're my child. And it's like, yeah. So like now you're saying something that insinuates there's like something that I should know I owe you because you're my mother or father. So like what is the thing in your head that like you're my child? What does that mean? Now what do I owe you, right? Or like you're my friend, you're my coworker, you're my – it's like, yeah, so what's the assumption, right? Which is why I'm pro-negotiation. Like tell me what are we assuming is the norm here? Because I genuinely don't know and I don't think I should be obligated to know what I'm genuinely open to saying I don't know. And I only don't know because now, I mean, if you're like me, you've gone from bubble to bubble, you've gone around, you've changed countries. Like there's expectations that I just want to know the rules so I know what to do. But obviously no one's asking me what I want. So I have to ask everyone else what they want because I'm the one who's willing to admit like I don't know what's expected of me. But I wouldn't ask you to do what's expected of, like, unless you're in my home. If you're in my home, I want to be able to say, like, hi, welcome to my space. Here's what I would prefer that you do as even a guest. You know what I mean? Like, we have uh, two offices. I'm in my office right now. There's, like, a bed. There's always, like, beds in every every room in Croatia. And already, like, friends and family are like, oh, can I stay with you? And I was like, ooh, yeah, nope. Only, like, a few people are on the list of who can stay with me in my house. And it's very few and not even everyone in the inner circle because no offense. I know those people too well and they ain't staying at my house. And I was like, no. And so there's this assumption of like, but we're siblings. And I was like, yeah, but you're the sibling who has this habit or you're the sibling who's going to be uncomfortable with the art on my wall. I'm not taking it down for you. And like that is a request some of my siblings have made. Like my religious siblings, they're like, well, can you take your art down before I come over? And I'm like, bro. So that's like in this house, mm -mm, nope, you don't have to come over. You don't get to see the house, bros. (laughs) Because I got naked girls all over the living room already. (laughs) I do wonder what it is about people who feel so comfortable to push boundaries. And I try to think about like what situations have I maybe done that to someone Mm. too? Like – are there expectations that I've had of of people where they were like, whoa, where did this come from? Yeah. So I wonder about that too, because maybe to some extent, depending on the level of closeness, it can be expected. Mm. Um, 
because like parents, I feel like, especially with children, they have this image of you as a newborn baby, <laughs> as a baby that they, well, they did know more about you than you did yourself. They knew Absolutely. when you would need to be fed. They knew mm-hmm. when you'd go to sleep. And when you're a child, right, to some extent, yeah. they also knew what's best for you in regards to like schedule, health, yeah. school, et cetera, right? Like you weren't equipped to make those decisions. And so I can see how it can be difficult, right? Like there's like that empty nester syndrome, right? Yeah. Where the child makes a transition to someone more and more and more independent every mm-hmm. single year, right? Like there's like parents who celebrate but also mourn when a yeah. child peels an orange for the first time for themselves and they don't yeah. need to ask the parents for help with that anymore. And so mm. I feel like that makes sense to me not that that now means that you have to adhere to their every whim right right but but i can see where that comes from what i can't see is where that weird distrusting but also entitled internet thing comes from that's where i'm like okay wait i don't get that (laughs) yeah no i see it but i see it with friends dude i see it with family i see it with like people in your real life where there's like a renegotiation that has to happen where it's like oh hey 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 so you know how i came to you in the past for advice and i'd let you into some of the things that was going on and so now you think every time my life goes in a direction i need to let you know like where i'm moving or what i'm doing like no 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 like we need i need to remind people i think people get stuck in this again this assumption that that they are allowed intimacy and what degree they're allowed it from the internet to even like friendships. Yes. I do think it's on a spectrum where, but there, I think there's a threshold where it can become weirder and weirder. So like, again, with parents, I don't think it's that weird, but again, it me, but still like hold on to your boundaries. Right. Sure. But I think like parents can get a little sad about yeah, like their yeah, kid not fair. needing them anymore with friends. I think, especially depending on when you met them, right? Mm, yep, I think yep, with yep. childhood friends, it can be like that kind of almost like sibling relationship where maybe y'all did overshare or maybe mm-hmm. there were like some things that they helped you out with. Maybe they think they're seeing a pattern in you that happened in the past that mm-hmm. they want to prevent because maybe that's what you wanted from them at some right. point, right? So that also makes a little bit of sense but i think it once you're to the point of being an adult then you should be able to renegotiate that right 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 and so it goes on and on um i think it's full on weird if a coworker is like hey um i notice that your um wedding ring is only 0.5 carats like i think that means your husband doesn't love you or whatever like Stop. whatever weird shit right yeah. that's weird that's, that's weird. weird so i that's think weird. like On the spectrum of relationships, it's like more expected and Mm. normal. And maybe even we subconsciously do that or maybe like we don't because we're more self-aware and like we've worked through it. Um, But and again, hopefully you have a healthy enough relationship to where you can say, hey, I don't need this from you right now. Please, let's not. Um, But then but then there's like a threshold where, okay, now suddenly expecting like a level of intimacy is weird. Like I think there's like a level of intimacy with friends that should not be expected by coworkers. And there's a level of intimacy with family that should not be expected with friends. And there's a level of intimacy with romantic partner that should not be expected with, with family. Yeah. And so to me, strangers or an audience, the level of intimacy they should be expecting is zero. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah um like whatever or very the close to it whatever yeah in the content exactly yeah or very close to it right so yeah i think i think i don't think that it's equally as weird for parents to maybe want to be involved in their child's lives sure. as it is for an internet stranger no, i think sure. it can be maybe um both can be disruptive yeah. Um, and both can be unwelcome. But I think the way that you the, the way that I'd perceive them would be the like the why behind it would be right. different. Right. And I think the internet you owe me intimacy why is more 
suspicious. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. I have a bestie and I love her so much. And one of the things her parents are like uber, uber private, like very private. Maybe you've even heard me tell this story where I was like, hey, how much did you pay for your house? And the mom was like, Brittany, you don't ask those things. That's very rude. And I was like, hi, I'm going to introduce you to Zillow. And I was like, so Zillow told me you bought this house in this year. And she was like, oh, and I was like, girl, welcome to the modern age where everyone tells everything to everybody. And then I asked my best friend, like, I still to this day do not know how much my friend makes a year. And she's like, that's really private. Like, I don't talk about money. And so like, look, so for me, that's really weird. My family is like really transparent with money. They just think like you should talk about it. You should like, you know, whatever. So I told her, I was like, you're being so weird. But you know what would have been really weird is if I pushed her on it then that would have made me so weird. If I was like, she should tell me we're best friends. No, it was weird culturally that like, oh, she doesn't share, but I do. Okay, that's our difference. What's weird is when you overstep those boundaries and you use like, but but like, if you were honest, you would tell me if you were it's like, what do you, why is that? Why are you being manipulative with, with like pushing those boundaries of intimacy? Like if she doesn't want to tell me like, girl, that's her business. Like that's, I don't, that's none of my business. But I, you know what I mean? Like there's this, that's the disconnect I see with people where they don't know what's like appropriate. And then like, where is, where are you being inappropriate? And that's what's weird to me. Weird to me is like, there's the fun weird. Like I'm reclaiming the word weird and yeah, I'm a freak, but I'm an awesome freak. That's okay. Foomp. But then there's the real weird. And that is when you do not know when to like mind your business. Yes. No, I love when people can mind their business. Um, I do wonder, like, there's like this weird but not weird thing that friends can have or do too. <laughs> it is um, being a fun bully, oh, which yeah. is like when you're like, when you're maybe like one friend is like depressed and like, oh, I don't want to go out. And you're like, come on, go out, pussy, let's go. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, are you encouraging your friend to come out of their shell? And like, this is the way that they need to be talked to, to make that happen. Right. Or are you like trying to manipulate this person into breaking their values? Right. right. And so I think that's like a pretty, right? It could go either way, right? When you're like being a fun bully or when you're like pushing your friends to like right. share information or share intimacy. Um. And I think it is a very, very fine line. And I think what it depends on is whether you know each other's values. Mm. So if, for example, like you, for example, with your friend, you know that her value is to be private about like financials. So therefore it would be weird to push her on it. Absolutely. But if you like, but for example, if she's always shared it and now she gets into like a relationship with someone and now all of a sudden she's private about it mm. or like so something like has changed. Yeah. Like in a weird way. Right. I don't think it would be weird to hate, be like, Hey, what's going on right. here? Right. You know, like, are you being financially abused or like, are you being – like, are you in a controlling relationship? Checking in is always great. Like, <laughs> check in, see how we're doing, make sure everything is good, make sure everyone feels healthy and safe and kind and there's all the good things happening. But I think you're right. Like, I'm a big share. She loves being like, how much did you make this year and how much do you have in savings? I was like – because she's an amazing saver and I know she doesn't make – like six figures or anything like that. But I know she's like a really good saver and I know she's really responsible with her money versus I'm the one who makes more money, but I'm very like bad with money. And so the joke is, is like I go to her and I'm like, how do I save money? She's like, just don't buy anything. I was like, no, I need a better answer than that. And I'm getting better at it. But like, that's what I'm saying. Like the irony is like, she doesn't even have to tell me how she makes for me to still gain wisdom from her choices and vice versa. It's like, I'm willing to share. So we're willing to use that information. Like there's still a way to be intimate without being crossing boundaries. But I think there's also, like you said, like with siblings, especially girl, there have been times when my siblings are like, come on, do it. Come on, do it. And then you have to be like, okay, safe wording. Like, absolutely. This is a boundary. Like now it's not fun. Now I feel like really unsafe. And I think that like when you get to know people, here's the problem though. It's like, again, people have to listen to you. Yes, exactly. Like I think like on some level in regards to peer pressure, for example, as an adult, you have the responsibility, responsibility to be like, no, like yeah. if it's actually a no, right? And you're right. not playing like a little fun game of like, ooh, let's see how far exactly. they can push this. 
And on the other hand, if somebody is like physically coercing you or threatening you, okay, well now suddenly this is a different situation, right? Like if you're like um at like a party and people are like, take another shot, bitch. <laughs> and then like, you're like, no, no, no. Oh my God, the sun is coming out. And Love it. then everybody like holds you down and funnels like vodka into your mouth. Okay, now we're like in a yeah physically unsafe situation. Yeah. Uh, but if all people are doing are saying, take another shot, bitch. And you're like, nope. And then you're like, you know what? I'm going home. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there you go. Like that's yeah. the situation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's definitely like <laughs> also another threshold, right? It's on a spectrum. Like I think people can say like they can ask for a certain intimacy and you can say no. And the way that they react to it, um, can indicate whether that's like a safe situation or not, like whether they're being like playful and like maybe they're just sharing what their, um, way mode of operating is. Yeah. Or if they're being like forceful and malicious with it. Yeah. I think it's hard for people because we've all been taught to like love differently or what love looks like. And so for some people, they think love looks like invading your boundaries or crossing those boundaries or whatever. And that's why I think, again, when we're talking about consent or we're talking about the philosophy around love or consent or boundaries, we're really talking about values, but we're also talking about how do I communicate those boundaries to people without them feeling rejected, without them feeling like I don't trust them, without them thinking like, oh, you're being very sussy right now and that's weird and I don't like it and I'm afraid. Again, weird can be an empowered word that we've taken back. Like, okay, I remember when anime was weird and now it's cool, right? There's like one level of weird, right? But Wait, then- who's even, anime? Like, no, like the watching anime. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, is anime like a person? <laughs> watching anime, girl. I remember that. And it is still weird, by the way, to like some of my normie normie friends. Like they're like, oh, that's interesting. Like you watch that. But it's just a, like a, uh, a different uh, – what's it called? Like a category of art you watch. Like it's a, a medium of art, right? But there's like this narrative of like what is weird. Weird could be just like culturally like different. But then there's like like we said, like true weird. True inappropriate weird. Like you're being weird right now, dude. Why are you being so weird? What's going on? You know what? When you mentioned the anime thing – uh, my boyfriend and I were actually talking about this, how there's like people who enjoy a certain genre sport, like or thing, sports, K-pop, music, anime, the show Breaking Bad, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there's fanatics. Ooh. And I feel like that's where it gets weird, right? Yeah. Like with anything is when you're fanatical about it. Yeah. Like the, the K-popers who like, I don't know run people off the internet because somebody said their bias isn't the cutest one or something. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> or like the, and so I think that's maybe the word I was looking for is there's some people on the internet who are fanatical. Yeah. Whether they're yeah. like, oh my God, I'm like the biggest fan or like, oh, I, now I need to know everything about you and like invade your privacy. And so I think there's a normal way to interact with any medium. And with any tool, right, like the internet or like anime or whatever other TV show. And then there's the weird way. And the weird yeah. way is when you make it your whole life. And again, to an extent, I think like fanaticism when you're 15, 13, 12, 16, right. like maybe into your – a little bit into your early 20s is kind of normal. But if you're a fanatic at like 35 years old and you're like, I don't know, pushing kids out of the way for that last figurine, you're yeah. like kicking, <laughs> kicking people out of the way. Okay, yeah. well, now I'm like looking at you a little weird. <laughs> yes. No, I think that's a great example. And I didn't realize because, again, it goes back to boundary, like boundaries, like not having a, a reasonable limit of like this is inappropriate. You're being inappropriate. And I don't know why you don't know that you're inappropriate. Because that begs the question of like, well, how did we get here? Because you're right. That's when I feel uncomfortable. It's like when there's an inappropriate – like we're just being – it makes me nervous, dude. Like the inappropriateness of it. And I try really hard to be appropriate, whatever that means. Like, you know, people will say like, oh, you were like naked in Seattle. Isn't that inappropriate? I was like, not for the culture. Therefore, I'm being normal, right? But if I went into like another space that wasn't pro-nude and then I was like, yeah, I would never be that inappropriate. 
I'm trying really hard to be a level of appropriate. Now, I won't lie that in my 20s, I did get tempted a lot to kind of test what is appropriate. And I did a couple of times while I was figuring out my values, like be inappropriate in a way that I'm like, oh, looking back now, I can see how like how selfish it was in a negative way to think only of myself and not of the community at hand, which goes back to how did you word it earlier? Like um, a burden to society or how, what did you say? Yeah, like an undue burden. Yes. Undue burden yes. to the community. Yes. And I don't want to be that because like we live in a society and I like society well enough. Like we're a great group of people that make things really happen for each other. But like that's what a home is. That's what a home bubble is. That's what like a this is my space to be as unfiltered and weird as I want because I can't be inappropriate with myself, hopefully, if we're being healthy. I can just be my natural self. Like today, we have like a lot of windows in our living room and I was like naked and I was talking to my partner and he's like, wow, like you're being very nudist right now. Like, could someone see you? But like we have no surrounding buildings that are as tall as ours. And unless somebody has a belt, like a binoculars and they're like miles away and looking exactly at my window, which would be which super they're weird. being inappropriate. Yeah. They're being inappropriate. <laughs> No one's going to see me. You know what I mean? And so like I wouldn't do it, but we're in the – we're like the perfect apartment. We're like the corner lot. So like no one is near us. And it's like the perfect area to just walk around naked. But I was like, yeah, see? See how like it would have been inappropriate for that person to be looking in my window? I'm already doing my due diligence. I'm already checking to make sure no one can see me unless they make an effort. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. I think I think like we definitely like touched – touched the core of like what normal is, which is mm -hmm. recognizing where you are and acting appropriately for that situation. It's not about whether you like anime. It's right. not about whether you're kinky. It's not about whether right. you have such and such fetish. It's not about whether you have such and such disability. It's not about that. Like I, I would never like be like, oh, that like weirdo who I don't know is, I don't know, diagnosed with autism, like, you know, yeah, walking yeah, around yeah. minding their goddamn business, right? Like yeah. that's not, that's not what I think people are talking about. Um, in and like, I also think about like in school, mm. right? Because people talk often about like b experiencing being the weirdo in school. Yeah. And that's a really interesting situation to me because I think developmentally, this is a point where you're still learning what's appropriate to share and what's not appropriate to share. And I think about like, okay, is it appropriate to, for example, wear a furry tail to school? Mm. And that's an interesting question because technically yeah. like, and then, and then I also think about like people who are wearing like alternative fashion in public. Like, obviously I don't think that's an undue burden to whatever, right. but like if, for example, you were wearing like a super alternative outfit to someone's wedding, maybe that would be inappropriate and totally. an undue burden. Or and if so, you brought a so, guest to the wedding that like yes. disrupts the vibe, you're like, what are you doing? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I think like when we're super young, it can be for some people more difficult to read the room. Mm. And... And then also, developmentally, it's maybe difficult for people to healthily express, like, hey, you're not reading the room. Yeah. And yeah. so that can create, like, some chaos and some, like, hurt. Yeah. And so I wonder, I wonder, like, because that's, like, to me the most, like, maybe not real, but maybe the more important situation to address. Because, like, I don't, like, if you're a grown adult and you're being disruptive, like people are gonna rightfully avoid you. Yeah. But when you're a child, it's a difficult thing to address because like saying like, okay, everyone just ignore the, like just ignore that this kid's wearing like a furry tail to school. <laughs> like, okay, well that's, well, but now maybe it's making the other people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. The kids who aren't wearing the furry tail to school for, yeah. you know, whatever reason. And I think that's like a difficult, but I also think experiences like that are important. Mm. Like we, in school, I think it's important to navigate that and be, and hopefully you have like a good support system at home to be able right. to process everything. But yeah, like I think it's good to self-reflect like on either side, like whether you were the person who was the weirdo or if you were the person who was like calling out the weirdos, it's good to self-reflect and be like, okay, 
where was that coming from? What was my actual goal? Yeah. Because I think for most people, the goal isn't just to like hurt you, right? right? They just are struggling in communicating either way, right? Like maybe saying like, hey, like, you know, I appreciate that you're into furry stuff and whatnot, but maybe like hold an event for that or like maybe create like a club for that or something like that where you guys go and get dressed up at this time in this space. Um, and you do that instead of, you know, being disruptive to the vibe of the school, right? But at the same time, I don't know if I could justify that like somebody wearing a furry tail is necessarily disruptive, but there is like that association, I think, with kink yeah. and with sexuality yeah. with like the furry community, right? And so that yeah, can yeah. be maybe inappropriate for a child to be participating in, but maybe not. I don't know. Well, that's right? the thing. If furry family furry days exist in Balboa Park, it's like obviously a non-sexual event to some extent or the official discord has like minors on it because it's not supposed to be sexual furry stuff. It's like, oh, OK, we have options here. So again, it's like read the room. Am I in a community or so that's the thing. If you're willing to stick out like a sore thumb, which is great. I love that rebel. Then that means you are saying and signaling to the world, I am different and therefore they're going to think you're weird and therefore they might even think you're inappropriate. And so you have to decide, am I going to fight this battle to explain that I'm not being inappropriate and this is why culture should change? Or are you going to say I am being inappropriate in a sense, in a sense, because I am choosing to rebel? It's like I'm open to all the options. I don't want to say like society should be this way or this way. So society is different pockets of the world. And I feel like we should have a conversation about like what is appropriate and what should be expected of each other you know what I mean in a space and I again I love rules and I love boundaries I just want to live in a place where I have more options but they still BDSM still has rules people it can be whatever you want but it still has rules here's this is another concept I've been exploring too is like at what point do you disrupt the bubble you're in mm. and I feel like it depends on what you value mm -hmm. right so if you value the peace then maybe you could go and do whatever that you're doing on your own or like in an appropriate community. But I feel like if you value like, I want to be me, like all of me 100% of the time. So right. I'm going to like, I don't know, wear my furry butt plug and a mini skirt to the grocery store. <laughs> okay, then you have to recognize that you're valuing that over the piece. You have to recognize that people are mm -hmm. going to have a reaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which again, like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, no, finish that. Finish that. Um, yeah. Which I don't know if that's necessarily always fair to ask of children, but that's what they're learning. And so I feel like we have to give them the opportunity to learn that. Like, hey, if you're going to be disruptive to the bubble, people are going to have a reaction. And now you have to decide what do you value? Mm -hmm. Because I think it's fair to value like, okay, I want to be like this version of myself in any situation over valuing the piece, so to speak. Right. What am I? Okay. Here's my main concern. I do not want people to be so private that if it goes public, it gets them fired because people aren't prepared for what's happening privately. I don't want people to go back to like, oh, keep your gayness at home in the closet, right? I don't want people to associate what I think should be normalized as abnormal to the point of needing to hide it. And at the same time, like I personally am not like the biggest fan of seeing people with full on butt plugs in public where it's obvious. I'm like, oh, this feels inappropriate I mean I'm not gonna lie this is Brittany this is not me like saying anything about anybody but even like regular tales I'm like what's happening what are we doing like is this a free convention like this is Target but then at the same time like who's this hurting nobody I don't care but then again it's like that question of like what what is our limit and look like I said in my 20s I experimented I experimented so much with like what is appropriate what's the vibe I think New York City and Seattle are both topless cities I could be wrong on that but it's like oh would I go and experiment with that just because I can and like, what does that mean? And what does that look like? Look, all options are good options on a spectrum. And we all have to decide like what vibe do we want to create and what do we want to signal to one another? I always want to signal to people that I'm safe, sound and reasonable, that I'm here to not make your life worse. I'm not trying to ruin your day. And hopefully you don't try to ruin my day and we can all just go about our day. Like, actually, I don't know if one of the things I love about being in Croatia is that nobody knows me and I'm just like known as a good customer. That is how everyone has interacted with me is the now that I'm in like a building, we have like a grocery store that's ours and like restaurants that we like and play. people know me as this girl who like comes in, they see me, they greet me warmly like, oh, I remember you. But 
it's not like they're like, what's your name? What are you doing here? Why are you? He-? They're just like, oh, OK, pay your tab and like call it. Go- I love that. That is so nice. The only people who ever catch us at the grocery store and tap our shoulders are are his parents, literally. <laughs> we'll like be at the store and they'll like, there they are. And like, that's cute. And I like that. But like, that's it. And there's something really lovely about that. And I think a big part of what it's lovely is that people are making society work by not like actively trying to be versus in America. I've been in some places, dude, where you're accosted at the front door, you're followed in the store, you're handed. It's just like, this is a lot of in my face. It's a lot. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's why I prefer, I think, the urban lifestyle to the rural lifestyle or, like, Mm. the more suburban lifestyle because, like, I don't want to have a whole conversation with the cashier every time. Like, just just scan my items and go. Um, But, no, that's a good point because I think there's definitely um, what you said about, like, oh, we don't want to go to a place where, like, if people find out that you're gay now suddenly, you know, it's, like, a whole thing. Um, And I wonder... Okay, I like put being gay and then like having a particular hobby, like being a furry, like into two separate categories. Totally. Um, and to me, and this might be just like a my brain thing, but I think, I don't think that being gay is unhealthy in any way. Mm. is just a normal healthy way to be Mm -hmm. like you're gay Mm -hmm. boom awesome yeah but i think that wanting to express yourself a hundred percent of the time in like an outlandish way Mm. now there's something there Mm. that could be normal but could also not be Sure. And like, I feel that there is a comorbidity of other things happening with things like alternative fashion or like, you know, furry and whatever. And that's, I love alternative fashion. Okay. Like, I think it's super hot. I love it. Um, But like, for example, like Cat Black is goth and like, I don't get any like not normal vibes from her right. or anything like that, right? So and I, I think it might be like kinky. exactly, exactly, but yeah, totally normal to me, totally normal. And so I I think it's maybe how you present yourself mm-hmm. because there's also like um I think I've seen like some people who were furries, but they were expressing that in an appropriate context and then when they were just talking with a person they they conducted themselves in a very normal way yeah so yeah i think i think it's like yeah very very context dependent as we were saying earlier so i feel like i'm repeating myself a lot but i think this is the first conversation i've had that Mm -hmm. solidified a much better way of having the conversation around normal or not normal or weird and normal, which is very much like, are you cognizant enough in social situations to be appropriate? Exactly. Exactly. And like, I think it's, and like clothes communicate things. Yes. And so I'm not saying like, let's lock up all the furries or anything like that. Right. But I am saying do we need to be in a fursuit in church or at a right. wedding? Or right. do we need to like wear a tail to um, school? Or do we need to wear ears to like your mom's wedding or whatever? Yeah. It, it's like, can you put that away for the sake of the community and then also know that you have like a safe, comfortable space to explore those things in? Yeah. But I don't think being gay is the same as that because mm. normal people have relationships and they, you know, have those relationships publicly. Mm. So, you know, yes, go to the wedding with your partner mm-hmm. dressed in the appropriate clothes for the occasion. Right, right, to me, right. that's that's all that's that anybody has a right to ask. I don't think they have a right to be like, OK, you can't come with your like, you know, same-sex partner or anything like that which of course of course there are people who are gonna do that but again to me the super religious people are the more weird ones um when it comes to that 
Right. So, yeah. I will say, how about on this front? One last category I want to make sure we cover is like the neurodivergence because I know all my autists are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I was like, okay. So, blah, blah, blah. so I will say like it takes an immense amount of spoons for me to also act appropriately in meaning not like myself because I know how to be appropriate. But being appropriate can also feel like being a, a natural because not everyone, you're not always in a culture that's natural to you. You're not always in a social situation. Like it is my instinct to smile and wave be like, hi. Like it is, so I have to be like less like myself, but more like a version of myself to adapt to this situation, like to feel, to not be inappropriate, which I'm fine to do. And that's me being considerate, right? I'm thinking about other people in that moment. I'm not just thinking about myself. And I want to say that the good news is that that's why I do like my channel. That's why I like my discord. I try really hard to allow the neurodivergence to run wild because we don't often get spaces to do that. And like, it's very exhausting masking all the time and very exhausting trying to figure out what's appropriate. And at the same time, we just want to be not for the sake of not being ostracized, but for the sake of the people around us to be thoughtful without the, without ever succumbing to what I think is really unhealthy, which is like, I'm, I don't even, I don't need anything. I'm not good enough. Society is normal and I'm not. I don't want people to think like society deserves us to mask so they can feel comfortable. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying to keep the peace, let's be cohesive. But that also involves the normal society being chill in situations where things are uncomfortable to them. Like maybe they've never seen a gay couple. You need to be chill, bro. Agreed. I will say like with the cultural shift, it's normal to be like, whoa, you know, like, for example, you know, you're having like this experience in Croatia. My mom, when she moved to the US, um, I mean, she still does this. Um, she doesn't really smile at people, you know, and she rolls her eyes at situations, which can be interpreted as quite rude in the US, right? Yeah. But I know her. I know she's not being rude. Yeah. But people have been gracious, I think, like she has the accent, she like right, like to understand that she's adapting to a culture. Right. And so I think it's normal to be like, hey, I'm from a different culture and also this is clear by my behavior. Agree. Agree. Um so I do think yes that that's part of being owed civility, right? Yeah. It's like this is a cultural thing. And also like for example, um, I think we should be considerate. Like, for example, if a child is having um, a meltdown because they are autistic, they're just overstimulated and the parents are trying their best. I think the people who like have anything negative to say about that are the assholes. Mm -hmm. I think they're the weirdos. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're the people who haven't gotten out enough to, mm. or they're super young and they're just like, eh, kids, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so I think most regular people can be considerate or at the very least like, okay, let's move on with our day. Yes. Yes. That's when, why when I watch when, videos of yeah. people getting people's business in public, I'm like, mm -hmm. what is going on? Yes. Yes, exactly. Like literally at the very least, just mind your business. At the very least. Um, so if someone's having like a mental health moment, like are they being weird? Yes. But we should answer to that with compassion or again, just like a mind in my business, gonna walk right. past this screaming lady. You know, like right. Right. that's it. There's no need to like get involved because I think once you do get involved, now you're participating in the weirdness. Well, the energy is now escalated. You've added yes. a whole new consciousness to this like exactly. energy bubble here, ma'am. Exactly. Like, and mm -hmm. I, and then as far as like accommodations for like autism, like I don't think anybody should be like staring at you weird because like, for example, you're wearing noise canceling headphones right. because like the noise or the, you know, whatever is overstimulating or if you're wearing sunglasses, you know, like some people like treat people wearing sunglasses indoors like, oh, you're, you think you're cool or whatever, but maybe they're blind. Maybe they're mm -hmm. autistic and the lights are overstimulating them. Like just mind your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, think it, don't spit it. I think there's a way to be neurodivergent in society with finding appropriate ways to mask and unmask, depending on your situation. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, if your stim is flapping hands, that's not harming anybody. Like, right. do you? If your stim is like spitting or like 
banging your head. I know some people do that. Or like biting. Mm. Then maybe let's go to the grocery store, pick up what we need, and then go home and do what we got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so it, 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 it always comes back to being appropriate. Like, that's all we're talking about. Yeah. We're just saying be appropriate. I think I'm going to utilize this language, like, as I move forward making content, because I do think I've struggled with how to communicate, like, weird versus what feels normal. It's just, like, be a certain level of appropriate. And then you can talk about challenging society. And look, I think that's why I love protests, because I think you're being a certain level of inappropriate to get people's attention. That is what you're doing in a protest. That's why I always get confused when people want to, like, let's protest appropriately. It's, like, appropriate for what? Like, this is a protest. But at the same time, I think there are, like, again, certain levels levels of appropriate that even exist in protest bubbles and so we have to talk about what that looks like for each expectation of behavior like again I don't go to church like I'm so weird when I go to visit churches as a tourist I like dr try to dress modestly because people might be in the church praying but other people might not think about that because they don't come from a religious bubble and they're just thinking like oh I'm a tourist I'll go check out whatever I was in New York and that happened where people were walking in with like like very revealing clothing which yeah cool but like also this is an active church so some people are trying to get away from the temptation of your boobies and so it's kind of funny but they they don't even think to think that they're just thinking like it's a tourist trap so I can come dressed how I want but I'm thinking like this is an active church be appropriate so it's like again I can't expect I can only expect people to know what they know and I can only expect to do what I can do but at the same time, it's like maybe there should be a, a, a talked about expectation of appropriate that we can kind of generally go off of, generally. Yeah, agreed. Like, for example, with the church situation, maybe people aren't aware that it's an active church. Right. Um, or whatever. And usually, like, um, I feel like in a situation like that, like, for example, when I went to Armenia, I went into a church and I was given, like, a head covering by the priest. Yeah. Right. And so, like, usually I feel like, for example, I think they do that in the Vatican, too. Like, if you come dressed mm -hmm. inappropriately, somebody from the clergy will come and be like, hey, like, please cover yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I think, you know, and I think that's a normal response. And I think the, a normal, appropriate person would be like, oh, thank you for letting me know. I didn't know. Yes. Sorry. Yes. But if somebody, like, starts getting argumentative, okay, now we're not being normal. <laughs> but, okay. So I think it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I think it's normal to, like, not know and, like, be do a whoopsie yes. poopsie. I agree. But how you respond to being told that. Do you remember the video that went viral of the girls uh, wearing a bikini on the beach and people came up to them and was like, you're dressing really inappropriately. They're like, we're on a beach. And I'm like, see, see how you're being inappropriate? Why are you on a beach telling people to be modest on a beach? Inappropriate. I have not seen that video. Was I can, like, I mean, I'm sure in some countries maybe you're not supposed to be in a bikini on a beach. It was an but American, like, you know, Christian guy oh. going up to women and harassing them on the beach. Oh, like, okay. Well, then, yeah, like he's, then he's being a fucking weirdo. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. I'm like, you're on a – even my mother, who's very conservative, understands. Like, we're on a beach. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, again, in, in some countries, you might have to be a little bit more right. covered up on the beach. Right. Context dependent. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Croatia put out a, a, a warning to tourists that said, hey, like if you're in our beach towns, you can't wear a bikini outside of the beach area. You like wear Catholic country, blah, blah, blah. But then I was at the beach the other day and like topless women, like you're allowed to be topless here on the beach. As long as you're in like beach attire on the beach, it's chill. But if you're in like the community squares, they considered like inappropriate attire. And I'm like, see how they warn you and they tell you and like you might not vibe with it, dude. I get it. Like I traded in America for another religious country, but in a different way. I get it. We all have to follow rules. But at least it's like kind of clear enough, I guess. And like, again, the irony of being able to be topless on the beach here. But you can't be gay. And it's just like so funny. <laughs> yeah, I – but I think it's the warning or like the like PSA. Yes. Is like the key here, right? Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. you know, we can't just have like the secret like expectation and expect people to understand it immediately. Right. So I think that's – you know, what um, society's responsibility is, is to make the expectations clear, like don't surprise anybody with expectations, to have compassion for people who don't know, mm -hmm. to let them know politely, and then for the people to respond politely. Yeah, I agree. And boom, that's, and, and I think that's how most people operate, honestly. That's how we have like a, a regular society where I can, do, 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 drive to Target, pick up my things and go, you know, yeah. mostly without any disruptions.
So I, I think agree. as long as people can do that, <laughs> we're doing good. No, I agree. Oh my God. Okay. So I feel pretty good about the conversation. I feel like we talked about so much more. And honestly, like genuinely, I feel like I just gathered a brand new tool. I can't wait to go tell my person to be like, oh my gosh, guess what? Like new tool. <laughs> I'm so glad. No, I think, I think we got plenty, plenty good. Yeah, good. I'm so excited. Things, you know. So um, how about we do this? How about we end the podcast? Mm-hmm. You tell people where to find you on the internet if you would like to yeah. share that and then we'll just say bye. Thanks y'all for watching. Thank you to Brittany for having me here. Um, y'all can find me on Instagram and TikTok at monoshock.john. Uh, John is spelled J-A-A-N. Um, and then on YouTube, I am um, Arena na na na. <laughs> na na na. I'll put your links um, in the description. Awesome. I'm so happy to have you as always. Um, please hit me up again if any you know uh, ideas come into your noggin. I'd love to talk to you again. And with that said, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you guys next podcast. Bye. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun,